All right, I'm getting tired of these really weak chemical batteries. Let's build something with some actual power, like an actual power plant. Right here, we should have everything we need to make our own electric generator. We have some iron bars, some iron rods, and some copper cable. In theory, we should be able to combine all of this and we can start making our own electricity. So let's give it a shot. At this point, I've done a lot to explore early forms of electricity, from theoretical Baghdad batteries, collecting and storing static electricity in Leyden jars and static generators, to building voltaic piles in Daniel cells. But the output from any of these has been incredibly limited. Only with a large array of Daniel cells was it actually able to charge a cell phone. That felt like a major accomplishment, but compared to the amount of electricity we use every day, it's still closer to nothing. The biggest drawback of these early batteries is that they're all primary cells, non-rechargeable, single-use batteries that rely on metals like zinc. And zinc itself is a difficult metal to smelt, requiring high temperatures to reduce it to a pure form. All the energy that goes into producing the zinc itself is essentially what you're releasing when the battery discharges, making them horribly inefficient and expensive to use. So one of the biggest breakthroughs in electrical history was finding a way to directly convert kinetic energy into electrical energy, skipping the steps of storing chemical energy in metal. In one of our recent videos, we explored the reverse of this idea with the first practical electric motor. It works by taking advantage of the link between electricity and magnetism. When a current passes through a wire, it produces a magnetic field around it. Wind that wire into a coil around a piece of iron and the effect is amplified, creating an electromagnet. But only when the current is flowing. The motor we built used two sets of electromagnets, one stationary and one that rotated. With a commutator, kind of an automatic switch, the current through the coils was reversed at just the right moment, flipping the polarities of the magnetic fields. Timed correctly, the stationary magnets would push and pull the rotating one in sequence, creating a continuous rotation. But as with many things in electricity, the process works both ways. If you spin the rotor yourself, the changing magnetic flux through the coils induces a current in the wire. In other words, you can literally push electrons through the wires, turning motion directly into electricity. We actually tried this by running the Jacobi motor in reverse, and it did produce a measurable current but it was very small and not especially useful. So in this video, we're gonna explore recreating an early power generator, specifically designed to produce a much larger amount of electricity. So our main goals are first, build a generator that can produce a notable amount of power, at least comparable to our previous batteries, allowing us to convert kinetic power to electricity. This will allow us to connect it to our early power projects, such as the water mill, windmill, and tread wheel, and use them to generate our own electricity. The secondary goal is to produce enough power to unlock some upcoming innovations, most notably being the light bulb and a few of its predecessors. Finding the right direction and design to use for this project ended up being a huge challenge. Exact details on these early models with these early technologies was difficult to find. My main inspiration comes from Siemens' self-exciting dynamo from 1873. Wunder von Siemens invented one of the first practical electric generators in 1866. This is a slightly later and improved version that went into more wider use. His generator is what's called self-exciting where previous versions before this were limited by the strength of permanent magnets or by needing an external power source to provide some of the magnetism. Instead, as the generator makes more power, it increases the magnetism in the field coils, meaning it starts producing more and more power, potentially makes it much more powerful than anything else they could make at that time. I had little luck finding much information besides a few drawings without even much idea of the dimensions of the actual device. However, I was able to find a few other examples of contemporary generators of a somewhat similar design, including one at the actual Smithsonian that was able to see in person. But first, thank you to the sponsor of this video, Magic Spoon. I love cereal, and as a kid, I used to eat it every day, and if we ever ran out in the morning, I, it would just ruin my day. But as an adult, I rarely eat it, just because it's packed full of all things you usually want to avoid. Tons of carbs and sugar. But for a tasty way to reintroduce cereal into your life as an adult, you can try Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is made without grains, and has less carbs, with no sugar, and high in protein. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented with nothing artificial. A variety pack comes in four delicious flavors, fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter. The high protein, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, wheat-free, and naturally flavored. Click the link below to get your variety pack and try it today. Use my code HTME or click the link in the description to try Magic Spoon cereal today and get $5 off. You can also find Magic Spoons on Amazon or your nearest grocery store. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee online. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Click the link in the description or 
or go to magicspoon.com slash HTME or scan the QR code on the screen for $5 off. This machine will be made of a few distinct parts. First, there's a rotor, which will spin and push the electrons, and it'll be wrapped with several coils to form different electromagnets on it. So this is what we've been working on so far. This stack of rings here is basically what's going to compose our inner core or rotor of the electric generator. We want a large inner iron core to help concentrate or direct the magnetic flux of the generator. The reason why we decided to go with rings instead of a big iron core like this is that we may run into a problem with something called eddy currents. Eddy currents is basically when we have a changing electrical current which then induces another current inside the core, which will create its own electric flow or eddy current. However, in an application like this, this basically creates inefficiencies. We want to basically direct that energy into the magnetic field that is then inducted into our outer stator coil. So we're hoping that rings like this, separated with an electric separator like uh, wax paper, will help reduce those eddy currents. Ten rings out. I don't feel more powerful. <laughs> now to coil the rotor with insulated wire. For this generator, we'll need nearly a mile worth of wire. We previously did a video on the process of making your own wire from scratch and even insulating it, which we ended up using for our telegraph. However, it was always a bit finicky. And the last thing we want to do is wrap all of our electromagnets and realize there's a short somewhere in it. So to save some of our sanity, we're going to use store-bought wire. But we're going to stick with the gauge that we were able to pull, which we were able to get down to about 22 gauge, which actually seems pretty comparable to some of the early generators that were This is our first of three windings on the inner rotor of our electric generator. It took us about an hour and a half to wind, and I'm definitely feeling it in my hands. I would recommend wearing gloves. <laughs> so we'll have another set here and another set here. Four more coils of wire for our field coil as well. So we're one sixth of the way there. <laughs> Overall though, I think it's going pretty well. I tried to keep the wires as neat as possible, but obviously each layer on out, uh, the wires get a little rat nesty, but I think we're making pretty good progress. So a few different coils, they'll be magnetized at a different schedule and everything and trying to wrap them was very time consuming, a little frustrating. Ideally we want it as circular as possible from this section because it's gonna spin that way and we want the field coils to be as tight as possible. I think it turned out pretty good, but it's pretty hard to get it nice and evenly spaced and everything. So it's a little bit messy at a few spots, but overall I think it's fairly good. So then I coated everything with shellac. That kind of holds everything together. And the issue now is we have these metal bits we have here that help separate things. I think we want to tighten those up a little bit because I think the field coils are going to be basically right around them. Then onto the field coils, which will be the pair of electromagnets that the rotor rotates inside of and reacts against. These are going to be a large mass of wrought iron metal to amplify the electromagnet and also to effectively store the residual magnetism for the generator to start at first. Historically, they'd have had much more advanced machining methods to consistently work and shape these matching sizes at this time. Unfortunately, we do not have that capacity, so we need to attempt to forge this by hand. This is the progress we've made so far on the core of the field magnet. We've still got some inconsistencies in the bars, but I think we've made pretty good progress so far. It's been kind of a challenge because uh, we're essentially working with inch and a half by half inch flat stock. You can see some of these aren't quite at the right angle, but uh, we're going to work on that and get it dialed in. And yeah, making pretty good progress. So after a lot more work than I expected, we now have basically our field coils. This is basically the metal part. They'll get magnetized and be the magnet that our rotor reacts to. Trying to hand forge all of these proved to be a bigger challenge. I had to do a lot of grinding to try and get them as close as possible. So we put some threaded rods here to hold them together and keep them spaced appropriately so that we can fit the rotor inside here where it will spin and we'll start pushing electrons at that point. Next up will be 
wrapping it with wire. It'll be 400 turns on each of these arms. Once we have that, we can put the rotor in here. Then it's a matter of mostly building the frame and the bearings and the commutator. And lastly, we have the commutator, which will basically switch the polarity and the different electromagnets as it rotates. So this has been a fun little entanglement to figure out, figure out what wire goes to which coil and the polarity. So now is the point where I have to swap all the wires and figure out what's going on. Basically, we're able to figure out using a compass to measure the polarity of it. Basically hooked up in reverse with a power generator, a little DC power supply here to put power into it. So then basically the goal is that the polarity always stays the same as it rotates. And then I've also figured out the polarity on the uh, field coils for the stator, and that should also be north and south, connect here correctly. And that should then cause them to be repelling against each other. So then when we are putting force into it, it is basically pushing electrons through these wires like that. But I think we're very close and should hopefully start producing some power here. It just started popping like that was weird. <laughs> it's actually kind of spicy. <laughs> So this is what we basically ended up bringing to open sauce. There's a lot of work to bring it out there. This is over hundred pounds. So I had to break it up between three different suitcases, but the end result was not very impressive. As is right now with the hand crank, it can just kind of make an LED flicker on and off, which is very disappointing. And part of the issue is just inconsistent. And I think the biggest problem is just our rotor. One thing that did make a pretty decent improvement is I went back and added these metal T's around it between each coil. That ended up improving the result a lot, but it's still was not really great enough to do much. So with these metal plates, we were able to get a lot closer, but because the wiring did not coil evenly, they're not evenly spaced. So we end up with some parts where it's millimeters away and other parts where it's, you know, let's stick a whole finger in there. At this point, it seems we're gonna have to basically redo the entire rotor. So we ultimately want something that's perfectly cylindrical and able to basically almost scrape the edges. We have a couple hundred of these cut, so we can still do laminations between them, which will help kind of prevent the eddy currents from disrupting it, allow us to get a little bit higher power. So we have to completely unwind this guy. Hopefully we can salvage the wire. And then we can stack all of these on there insulate them with some wax paper, put a coil around each of these columns, and then the outer part of it is a perfect circle that should hopefully fit perfectly within our field coils, and we should be able to really hone it in and get something uh, hopefully a lot more powerful. So this is our progress so far. The biggest improvement we've made is our rotor. Our original design had iron coils that ran throughout the rotor, which worked, but it wasn't perfectly even. And so we had a lot of wobble. So we upgraded to this uh, like finer laminated core. Overall, I think the general output of the device when putting in this new rotor has at least doubled. It definitely is a lot less finicky. There's a lot less vibration. However, over the course of probably like the last month I've been fiddling with this thing. I've played with wiring the 
uh, stator coils in both parallel and in series. Currently they're in series wiring and it seems that at least in lower RPMs I have a higher voltage output. Whether I have a higher current output I don't really know at this point. Because of our rotor and just because of the inherent design of a self-exciting dynamo and most generators in fact, it's actually pulsing DC current. So you can see as I turn it, you can see the LEDs blink but albeit rapidly, but because of that intermittent pulse, it makes it really hard to measure what our actual uh, electrical output is. I did put a capacitor in load with this uh, and I was able to charge the capacitor up to about 30 volts, which is a good sign. Unfortunately, that's only half the story. We also need to know what the actual current is to see if we're getting out more than we're putting in. The good news is uh, I can run this without any electrical input. So that means it is successfully self-exciting. So we're just directly converting mechanical energy into electrical energy, which is great news. One improvement we are considering is actually downsizing the commutator. It occurred to me that the larger the commutator is, the more bounce there are in the brushes, which could mean there's a lot more intermittent contact, which might be working against us. So we could be looking into shrinking that and seeing if that has any improvement. If any viewers out there have any insights on how we can improve this or anything I might've overlooked, please uh, comment and let us know because that would be a huge help. We've spent a better part of this year working on this project uh, with the first initial goal of bringing this to open source, only being able to bring the earlier version. And even now we are still not quite getting this thing up to what is hopefully the full potential. This project has been really difficult. There's not really like great plans that I've been able to find. And I, I'm not even sure how much power this thing should put out because I can't even find that information. At this point, I think we can say that we've accomplished our first goal of building a device that is able to turn kinetic energy into electrical energy. For you know, our biggest issue is just being able to measure it and figure out exactly how much because it's a, a little sporadic. And we can do some more experiments. And uh, in theory, we're hoping we can charge our own batteries using this and be able to use that to unlock some potential. Right now, it seems to be a little too inconsistent. A few more bugs we got to work out. I feel like I've run into this with pretty much every electrical project since even static electricity is that very straightforward on paper. It's a very conceptual, people have done basic demonstrations of it. But you try to do it in a, a, a larger scale, things just don't work. There's something a lot more finicky, I think, with electronics than pretty much every other topic that we do. But we're not going to stop here. The goal of this project is to get it up and running so we can connect it to things like our windmill or water mill and start generating our own electricity, drawing it from nature, build basically our own power plant using this, using this either directly or to charge up some batteries that we can then use to to make some progress in the history of a light bulb. Um, right now we've been kind of stagnant historically with like oil lamps since almost prehistory. And there really wasn't a huge change until we started industrializing and unlocking some more advanced forms of light. And then so we started unlocking things like gas lighting and then very quickly go into electrical light. Hoping to get this up so we can start progressing in those areas next. But we're going to keep working on this, hopefully get some good suggestions, get this up and running. This has been a larger project. These ones are always a challenge and it, what makes it a little bit easier is if you're able to support us on Patreon. Projects that end up taking extra time always throws everything off. Uh, so doing this one has set us behind on a bunch of other projects which then makes it harder to earn a living so if you want to see more videos like this consider supporting us on patreon helps make things like this possible but otherwise thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics also if you've enjoyed these series consider supporting us on patreon we are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going Thanks for watching.